Hey, is this Christina's number I'm texting? I got your details from my brother. I'm Dean's sister, Bethany. Oh, so you're Bethany. I've heard about you from Dean. I can't believe we're getting married. Is there something you wanted to talk about? I'd love to get to know you as well as Dean's other family members better. Hey, let's not do this. I don't have any plans on getting to know you better at all. Um, sorry. Did I do something? I'm only contacting you because there was something I wanted to mention. There's a little pre-party plan before the wedding, right? Yeah, that's what we have planned. I thought I already sent you an invite. Forget about it. I definitely won't be there. Oh, did you have something planned on that day? Look, that's none of your business. Let's just say that I'm not feeling up for it. What do you mean? I just feel sick thinking that someone who has an upbringing like you is waltzing into our family pretending to be one of us. It disgusts me. Hold on. What are you talking about? Uh, don't play dumb. You really thought you were special, didn't you? Get off your high horse. Clearly, you never got taught your place. There are important refined households like ours. And then, poor folk like you who don't know the first thing about etiquette. Are you implying that I'm poor? Where did you get that idea? Oh, don't worry, I heard. You were raised by a single parent, weren't you? Besides, you don't even go to college, just started working after high school, right? Clearly, your household was so short in cash that you couldn't even go to college. Seems like someone was living a peasant life. I don't think a person's worth is decided based on if they do or don't go to college. Stop trying to talk like you're smarter than me when you lack a proper education. You probably just graduated from some low-end high school and got some random job afterwards. They do say that higher education directly relates to how much money you make after all. I don't want there to be bad blood between us before we've even met in person. But I want to set something straight. You probably just heard that I was raised by a single parent and started to judge me slowly based on that. But are you sure that's the right way to go about meeting new people? How immature do you have to be to use preconceptions as a reason to not meet someone? Hey! Watch your words. I don't want to hear complaints from someone that clearly makes less of an income than I do. Excuse me, but I have a PhD in management and make seven figures a year. Sorry, but I don't think you're realizing how pathetic you sound from the immature comparisons you've been making. I guess the stereotype that rich people are all condescending is true. It's just make me sad for your sake at this point. Who do you think you're talking to? This is the reason why you poor folk have such a bad reputation. You probably rely on government support, don't you? I can clearly see why rich people have bad reputations too. Especially when all you've done is judge me from the second we started talking. You've said remark after remark with absolutely no proof to back things up. Isn't that exactly what educated people do? Trust me, you'll regret making me your enemy. Look. I was trying to be nice from the very beginning. If anything, you're the one that's trying to make it so that we don't get along. Just be a good wife to my brother and stay quiet. I hear that you're three years older than me. So I expected you to be someone that's mature about their beliefs. But I suppose I couldn't have been more wrong. Seems to me that I was the more mature one. Be quiet! I was opposed to you marrying my brother from the very beginning. And I had no obligation to get along with you just because you're now part of the family. I will not be attending your party. I'm sure everyone wouldn't be too pleased to hear that. I mean, the whole point of the pre-party is for both of our families to get to know one another. I don't want to repeat myself again. But I do not intend to get all buddy-buddy with you at all. I feel sick just thinking about it. Besides, I'm very busy every single day working at my five-star beauty salon as a manager. Now, I suppose you wouldn't understand what it takes to lead a business. I do envy how much time poor folk like you have though. Anyways, that's that. I will not be showing my face at the party. In fact, I don't have plans on going to the wedding either. Do you realize how selfish you're sounding right now? 
Dean and I have been organizing everything regarding this wedding and we've spoken about it to both of our parents. Bethany, please discuss this with your brother. Christina, good news. I'll be able to come to the pre-party. I was able to get some time off work and it all worked out. Oh, that's great to hear, Mom. Did you hear back from Dean's sister? You were saying that she was against the party as well as the wedding, right? Yeah, I can't believe some people. Dean said he was going to take care of it himself and everything I sent to her seems to just get ignored. So, I don't really know what's happening. I'm really sorry you have to go through that, dear. It's disgusting that there's classism in this day and age just for being a single mother. Maybe things would have ended up differently if I hadn't gone through with the divorce. Please, mom. Don't take it out on yourself. You thought really hard about all of that, right? Besides, I don't blame you for going through with it. You made the right decision back then by breaking up with dad. Thank you. But being through a divorce really does make things difficult sometimes. He was a cheater, for God's sake. He didn't even pay for child support either, right? Wait, how did you know that? Mom, I lived with the two of you. I knew something was off from the beginning. Anyways, I was really grateful that you raised me all by yourself while working a full-time job. All I could think about was making your life as pleasant as it could be. And I'm so grateful for that. Sorry, I shouldn't be bringing up divorce when your wedding is right around the corner. I'm sure it'll all go a well. Oh, yeah. One thing I wanted to mention about Dad. I don't plan on telling him that I'm about to get married. It'd just be awkward getting him to come along to the celebrations. Christina, about that. I don't know how he heard about it, but I got a text from him asking if he could come along. You're kidding me. Regardless of what you choose to do, you'll have my full support, dear. Knowing him, he probably heard rumors that you were marrying the son of an owner to a successful business or something. I suppose Dean's father does have a lot of connections being the head of the company and all. Ah, this is a pain. It was awful. I'll show you the text he sent me. I heard that Christina's getting married to a rich businessman. I'm sure she'll have a great life going forward. I can't believe all he can think about is money. Even when it's about his own daughter. Knowing him, he's probably low on money yet again. Anyways, I'm going to leave the decision up to you, Christina. If anything happens, I'll do everything I can to protect you from that man. Don't worry, I don't have any interest in inviting him to my wedding. I've also heard from Grandma that he had been asking you for money when he was running low. I heard you run off with some of your money when you went through with a divorce. Oh, you heard about that? That's why you had to work six days a week back then, right? I guess it was partially my fault since I was begging you to learn piano and gymnastics back in elementary school. Anyways, don't worry mom, I don't want to deal with him anymore. Besides, didn't he start a new family? Wow, you really know everything. Isn't that the reason why he loves you to begin with? The girl he was cheating with got pregnant, so he ended up marrying her instead, right? I heard everything from grandma a few years back when they thought I was ready to learn the truth. Oh, I didn't know that. Apparently, I have a stepbrother. Not that that matters though. Anyways, mom, are you sure you can text right now? Isn't your lunch break about to end? Oh, I guess you're right. <laughs> There's a lot lined up for me today. I was put in charge of dealing with a huge project to do with future stocks, so I've been stressed all morning. But talking to you has gotten rid of some of that stress. Well, hey, at least you'll get good pay if you're leading the project. I guess so, but it really is too stressful for my liking. And some of my team members just don't want to cooperate at all. I wonder if they think I'm just some bitter old lady. You're still young, Mom. Anyways, I really shouldn't be complaining. I'll talk to you later, dear. You've got this. Christina, it's been a while. Oh, hi Bethany. I hope you got the messages that Dean and I sent you over the past few months. The amount of texts you two are sending was driving me insane, so I finally responded. Are you happy now? Thanks. I understand that you're a busy woman. 
Anyways, I've said what I had said. I suppose the idea that a poor second-class citizen like you with a single parent is going to marry my brother. And I still have no plans in going to your wedding. It's true that I grew up with a single mother because... My dad loved us when I was young, but my mom raised me with love and care. But you didn't end up making it to college, did you? I had a different career path that I wanted to take after high school. My mom has nothing to do with the fact that I didn't go to college. I don't regret my decision. You thought of taking a different path in life because you didn't have the grace to have higher education, correct? Besides, I didn't even grow up in a poor household. I'm sure what you think is poor is completely different from what I think is poor. It's called perspective. Ever heard of it? I hope your defense for not being poor is that you have a roof over your head. <laughs> Obviously, I had a house growing up. You just want to marry Dean because he'll be next in line to be the head of our company after my father, right? You're just a gold digger that got close to my brother for the money. But I can see right through your plans. I have never planned on taking any money from the very beginning. I need to have a thorough talk with Dean about choosing women and how he ended up with a moneyless woman like yourself. He needs to get on my level when it comes to choosing partners. You see, I've been thinking about marriage too lately. Oh, congratulations. He's five years younger, but he's very charming. It seems like he can't get enough of me. And to top it off, he gets a very large wage working at an elite company that his father is in charge of. Though I don't really care about money. I'm the head of a five-star salon after all. But he definitely is worthy of becoming a part of our elite family with a personal history like that. He even went to Cambridge. He's an elite businessman that went to Cambridge? I'm starting to think you're lying. Oh, trust me. When you're as rich and important as I am... Men like that swoon all over you. My eyes can just tell if someone is successful. Then again, I suppose successful people just draw other successful people closer without having to do anything. I'm planning on introducing myself to his parents on the day of your wedding. So don't take it personally that I won't be showing up. Not like I'd go to your wedding even if I was free. <laughs> oh, it's a real coincidence that you're doing that the same day as our wedding. Well, he insisted over and over that he wanted to marry me, so I just had to. It's hard being a successful woman like myself. Especially when so many rich men want to date you. Right. So I guess you really won't be attending our wedding then? Why don't you just call off your wedding altogether? I mean, my family views me so highly that I don't even know if they'd want to show up to me with being absent. I've actually told some of my relatives the time against the whole thing, you know? Excuse me? I've told my cousins and uncle that you're just a gold digger trying to get our family's fortune after all. I'm sure at this point they think of you as some conniving little thief, only doing this for the money. You told them what? No wonder Dean's family didn't respond to any of my texts either. Do you get it now? We live in a totally different world than you do. You? And your mother don't deserve to step onto the same pedestal as equals in a wedding. I mean, what if someone thinks we're also in a working class too? I understand. It seems like you're immature to the core. Immature? Speak for yourself. Seems to me that you were trying to take all of your fortune and I caught you right before you could. No wonder you sound stressed. Could you just hurry up and call off the wedding so we could cut all ties already? I don't want any one of my relatives believing that they have to pretend to be family with you. What if your bad luck robs onto us? You better not show yourself at the wedding. Huh? Why are you telling me not to come now? Isn't this where you should be getting on your knees and begging for me to show up? Well, it's clear to me that we could never get along. You were condescending toward my mom, calling us poor and uneducated and didn't even listen to anything I had to say. Anyways, I'll be taking you off the list of invites to the wedding since I know you'll just bring the mood down. Great! I'm glad we can finally get all of this sorted. But keep in mind, I wasn't lying about being popular amongst my family. If I don't go, I wonder how many people will end up going. And if you make me your enemy, I'm sure my family won't be too pleased with that either. I hope you'll enjoy the backlash. 
Anyways, I have more important things to do than talk with some second class scum. How's the wedding? I hope there isn't too much backlash from my family that I'm not there. I thought that you didn't have time to be talking to someone like myself. I just wanted to check in to see how chaotic this wedding of yours had become. I'm sure you could cut the tension in the air with a knife. I'm rooting for you though. Thanks for checking in. You were going to meet up with your boyfriend's parents today, weren't you? Oh, right. About that, I got that all sorted last week. But regardless, something came up today so I wouldn't have been able to go to your wedding. I'm a busy woman and like someone. Oh, I see. I'm running a five-star salon after all. When you're the boss of a company this important, you just always have things to do and places to be, you see? Though it's safe to say you'd never be able to experience something like that. Sorry, Bethany. I need to go now. The wedding is about to start. You know, I work with importing and exporting cosmetics as well. Oh, um, that sounds very stressful. Oh, totally. We just had an offer from a super high-end brand called Wendy to sell their product at our salons. I'm sure you're shocked hearing the name. I mean, who doesn't know them? And we'll be collaborating anytime now. Well, I'm happy for you. Of course, something like this is expected when you're on my caliber. But I'm sure I'm going to meet far more VIPs moving forward when I become good friends with the head of the company. In fact, it's just so happened that the boss is going to a wedding today. I didn't get a proper invitation, but I'm planning on showing up just to be of a good impression. You see, that's actually my wedding. And if you remember, you're actually not invited anymore. The head of Wendy is my mom. Wait, what? Hold on. Say that again? You are the daughter of the head of Wendy? I mean, couldn't you tell from the address and dates that were on the invitation that I gave you? I'm surprised they didn't think something was off that both weddings overlapped. I threw it out without reading it because your name was on the invitation. I could have guessed. I'm surprised you even had the lack of decency to just rock up to our wedding uninvited. I was just going to drop by with my boyfriend and say hello to my client. He's going to be my next secretary after all. I thought it would be good if he had a chance to talk with the client too. That'll leave a great first impression, right? Well, you've made a terrible impression on me. I have told mom about the things you've said to me. She knows that you had no interest in coming to my wedding. And she's seen all of the awful things you've said about my upbringing. Hey, that was all just a figure of speech. I didn't even know your mother owned a business. Well... If you'd have come to the pre-party to greet everyone, maybe you would have figured that one out. I told you that I work at managing a high-end salon, didn't I? You could have connected the dots and told me. But I suppose this is great news. In fact, that you've now joined our family means that I have a direct connection with the owner of Wendy. Everything worked out in the end. My company will benefit greatly from this. See? Mom was saying that she wasn't going to go through with the collaboration and that she had no further interests in pursuing any relations with your brand. Wait, what did you just say? There's no need to cancel things when we've come this far, right? It seems like Mom made that decision after seeing all the things you'd been saying. Besides, she was talking about how risky it would be to collaborate with you going forward. How would it be risky? Well... For starters, you have a terrible ego, and you always put yourself first. Not only that, but after careful research of your company, it seems as though you've experienced bankruptcy in the past. You had been borrowing money from your own father just to keep the brand alive. And thus, she made the decision and it wouldn't be wise to work with someone as unreliable as you are. How did you find out about that? Well. After I finished high school, I studied abroad in Europe to learn about marketing. Now, I'm working under my own mother and handling all of the marketing for our brand, as well as doing extensive research on our collaborators' pasts. You're joking, right? So, obviously, I've done thorough research on your company as well, which I sent over to my mom. There has to be some mistake. That's right. We could always just say we have windy products and stock in our marketing and get more customers that way. Besides, it's not like we're actually bankrupt. 
My father has loaned me the money out of his own pocket, so our company doesn't take the hit. I can tell that you're an amateur at leading a business when you don't even recognize that borrowing money from your own father counts as you being bankrupt. I'm sure he was the one that built your brand up in the beginning anyways, right? Aren't you embarrassed that you've barely put in any work yourself and yet you were acting as though you were important? Though, I wonder how much longer he'd help you out. Wait, if my father stops supporting the business, it'll be over for us. And to top things off, if the collaboration with Wendy falls through, we'd have no choice but to close permanently. Wait, no, we'll be fine. My ex-boyfriend is an ex-Cambridge student who is an elite businessman, soon to be my secretary. He'll be able to come up with an intelligent plan on getting us out of this situation. I'm sure of it. You're talking about the son of that one high-end business boss, right? The man who's five years younger than you? Yes, we're going to be married soon. So please, I'm begging you to ask your mother once again to rethink her choices in regards to our collaboration. I don't think that's possible. Come on, you could always ask, right? I'll let you in on a secret. Your boyfriend's father is actually bankrupt himself and has an awful habit on cheating with multiple women. And to tap it off, that boyfriend of yours is a serial gambler that loves to lie about things he doesn't actually have. Wait, wait, wait. There's no use lying about things like that. So you were actually getting tricked by the type of person you hate the most. Poor and lacking in power. Hold on, why do you even know about all of that? Well, that simple. That father that we were talking about is actually my father. And your fiancé is my stepbrother. You're making this all up. How could you be related to him? While I was researching your company, I also did a background check on you, which led me to information about your fiancé, where I learned that both of them were manipulative people, they were only just planning to get close to you to steal your money from the very beginning. I can't believe this! My father left our family when I was in elementary school in order to marry the woman he was cheating with. And then he had a child with that woman, still not being able to get a job resulting him in begging my mom for money. He wasn't even paying child support. Tell me this is all a lie. How did I get wrapped into this? How could I possibly be taken advantage of? If you don't believe me, why don't you do some of your own research? That fiancé of yours doesn't have an education past middle school and has no work experience either. You're making up all of this! Anyways, I really need to get going. The wedding is going to start any minute. Oh, and your father told me to mention that you should prepare for a call later tonight. I'm sure he has a lot to say. And in regards to our collaboration, You'll receive a notification when it has officially been cancelled, so look out for that as well. Wait, Christina, please! We're family now, right? Could you do a thing for your older sister? This company is my life! So please, I need you to ask your mother again to continue with the collaboration. I beg you, please! I don't think so. Please, you have to help me out. I was in the wrong. I apologize for everything I've done. So please forgive me. Christina, I'll lose everything. How ironic. Bethany, who was implying I'd curse her with poverty, lost all of her financial support from her father and a golden opportunity from my mother. Obviously, her company went under. And to add insult to injury, my father and step brother, who were trying to use her for financial gain, started begging her for money too. And now, that I know the exact location where my father has been living, my mom has paid a high-end lawyer to ask for that child support payment he illegally didn't pay for back in the day.